Hello and welcome to this episode of the Curiosity Key podcast. I am joined with Scott Leifer. Welcome, Scott. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Charlie. So this is a bit of a bonus episode because at the moment, if you are listening uh, right now in March 2020, we are going through a bit of a a crazy, um, unexpected time. So we thought that we would get together and talk a little bit about thinking differently and about innovation and about how you can uh, get through these times and also just try and up your game and do things slightly differently. I'm rambling now. <laughs> Scott, anyway, do you want to uh, start this off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure, no problem at all. Um, so I, I've um, I've worked in leadership development, learning and development for over 25 years. And for the last 11 years, I've had a fab little business called The Learning Lab, um, which was all asking people to question their possible, which is kind of a bit relevant at the moment with uh, everything that's going on out there. And uh, 12 months ago, I also started another business called Imaginosity, which is, again, fairly relevant in the context of trying to think differently as well. But um, those businesses are a little bit different from each other. So the Learning Lab business that I, I've been trading for 11 years is all about uh, creating and crafting great content and facilitating events, uh, programs, coaching, um, working with organisations to enable people to achieve the things they want to achieve. They're using a lot of quite creative design in that as well to get people to think differently about how they can do things in organisations as well. Um, the other business, Imaginosity, is more of a product-led business, so developing products to empower uh, organisations to drive their own learning agenda, but we're trying to create different products for people so you're giving those to organisations so that they don't have to employ consultants like myself which is a slight irony because my other business is consultancy but the other business is actually developing products so they can independently do stuff on their own so they can uh, you know really power learning in their own organizations brilliant you're not the first business that's that's like that because i sit on the advisory board for a tech startup um it's all about reducing your carbon footprint so yeah. the tech startup is a, a sort of software platform that will calculate your carbon footprint for your entire organization no matter how many facilities that you have and the idea is that you don't need to then employ consultants to come in and calculate that for you you just get the automatic report and you just upload your data and this uh, tech startup was um formed by some environmental management consultants who you know a lot of their bread and butter money comes from clients that employ them to calculate the carbon footprint but they didn't want to keep doing that because they wanted to um actually be able to make a difference and help clients directly so they started this software company to help solve that problem but it is always quite funny when you're talking to people it's like yeah we've developed it so you don't need to use consultants and they'd be like well aren't you consultants yourself yeah. and they're like yeah. well, it's that, I suppose, in a, even in my my learning lab business because when I go in to work with clients my aim is that they don't need, need me by the end of it because I've, I've developed those people to enable them to be able to do things they weren't doing before so it's trying to future-proof those things once you walk away from them is how does then somebody carry on that journey and carry on those conversations which in current context that in the surface of it looks incredibly difficult because you don't see the person every single day but we still have to have the same conversations we would have had if we were in the same room as people it's just that we're in different rooms and different places likely to be in your own homes and um, to carry on those conversations so I, I think although the the rules and the disciplines have changed. Actually, some of the fundamentals of good conversations and communication and learning, and they have to, you know, continue and keep focused. Yeah, it's interesting because when I set up my business, everybody kept asking me, it's like, well, why aren't you uh, starting a marketing agency? Why aren't you doing right. the marketing for people? So you've got that retained income and you keep doing the work for people rather than going in and training them or working on customer journeys or you know looking at their overall strategy and I was like well I don't I don't want people to be reliant on me I want to empower other people to be able to do these things themselves because a lot of the times especially with smaller organizations um that you know they have all of the skills and expertise in-house and it's not just a case of a cookie cutter marketing approach so I, yeah, I never intended on having a marketing agency or wanting to keep people on retainers and just keep doing things for yeah. them. I, like the, the business grows over time into something quite different than what you set out to be. You can sit there with your grand plans and do a business plan or 
draw it out and I literally did draw it out. I actually physically drew pictures of what I wanted it to be and everything and visualized it. But when you get into the thick of it and you start doing stuff, it becomes something quite different. And that that's that's the case now is that it's it's gonna be something quite different for the next few months ahead than what I designed it to be or what it's been doing for the last period of time as well. So it's it's continually you know, I've I've read this phrase online all all week is it all week i don't know all, all last few days i'm trying to every week feels like a year at the moment um it's pivoting it's trying to get businesses to really pivot and to trying to think what do we do now and you know there's a there's there's extended periods for people at the moment where they're still in a, a period of shock you know and i've been there i'm still there to an extent with what we're doing with things around isolation and everything that's going on but it's how long we can sit and think about what we need to do before we actually start thinking about how can we think differently how can we have different thinking patterns to get us to really pivot how all, all our businesses can work i think it's going to be one of the key things to helping businesses to to transform in these times and we were chatting uh, uh, before the call charlie I was saying that when i started that imaginosity business last year um i had a, a, a quote alongside it that, that said with the world changing at such a pace um, the combined craft of imagination and application will be vital. And I opened up the roller banner at the start of the week to set up my home office. I went, I wrote that four months ago. My God, how relevant is it um, to make sure that we, we are all really thinking differently, but we're, we're also applying that thinking differently rather than just thinking it. We're actually doing something about it to try and help each other through what is a really difficult time. I think that's why it's, it's so important. That, well, it's why it's important to me because if you are empowered to be able to run through that customer journey process when you do have to pivot you have that foundational knowledge to be able to then apply what you need to do to that original customer journey and then just tweak it and change it so you don't then have to kind of start from scratch and and do everything um, in a completely new way because there are a huge amount of businesses at the moment that can't operate because they're customer facing they're relying on direct trade and you know they're they're having to think a bit differently about how they can bring in that revenue and keep their cash flow alive so it was kind of why we wanted to talk today just to sort of discuss ideas around how to think differently and also share some examples of things that are going on at the moment yeah sure Uh, i mean for me one of the one of the key things to do is to is to think on possibilities what if you know how can we do things differently in the current context rather than keep thinking well what am i doing at the moment is to start with that possibility of where you can take your business or your products that you're looking at i mean if i give you my own organization in my current context here for a moment um when i launched that business last year that new business last year it's a product-led business so my goal with it over the next five years was was to really try to build you know 10 to 15 really solid products that organizations could use and would empower them to develop and to train their people rather than having to use a consultant to do that. They'd buy in their own products they can use with it. Now, the first product I looked at was um, a product that I know you're now familiar with because you actually feature in it. <laughs> called Cognitize and Cognitize is a set of 52 cards that you share with people in order to help boost their learning. Now, straight away, when you've got that as a product and it's a card-based system and you're sharing something with people, it's one of the main restrictions in the last seven days that we've been told that we shouldn't be doing is sharing things and cleaning things down and cleaning surfaces. Um, so straight away, then I go, okay, that's not going to work currently in terms of the context of it, but it will work again at some point in the future. So we then have to think about, well, how could we do that differently? What other forms could it take? How could people use it? And I've seen some really interesting posts online in the last week. Actually, people going back to older posts that I had done five weeks ago when I was talking about kindness, because this whole product was powered by kindness, by getting people to give that gift to someone else as a gesture to say, I've learned something, now I want you to learn something else. And uh, the relevance of what I know I was writing three to five weeks ago is even more relevant now about kindness and about those gestures of humanity to help people to learn better. So I need to pivot that. I need to pivot how I can do it differently. So in my context, I need to think, well, probably now at this present moment in time, it's more a personal development tool that you do on your own, but then you share those virtually, you know, through a conversation you would have on screen rather than physically passing it on. 
But there's then actually a benefit in doing that as well through the product because you get to keep the card rather than giving it away. So you can use it multiple times without having to give it away. So straight away I go, do you know what, actually? It actually becomes even a more viable way of doing something because you physically keep the card as you do the sharing. Rather than some of the things when somebody gives the card away, they want to keep it. Well, you can keep it if you do it via a screen, then you do it via, you know, face-to-face conversation. But I still think we need to keep thinking like that, is keep thinking how can we pivot our businesses to think of them of being something quite different. And if we're starting to use more and more platforms like, you know, Zoom and Teams and Cube and all these brilliant, brilliant platforms as well, we need to also think and pivot about how we use those in the right ways rather than just switching them on, powering them up, doing a session you would have done face-to-face and thinking, well, that's how we're going to do it here. We've got a great opportunity within that, the fact that you've got a platform that potentially a lot of your users haven't really used that often or that frequently. They need a little bit of upskilling of how to use it, but straight away you've got an active audience who wants to learn rather than an audience before that went, oh, another meeting or another course sometimes. You've actually got people who don't necessarily all know how to use those platforms, so the upskilling part gives a real active audience participation. I heard one thing from a customer I spoke to the other day and they said that when they'd been using virtual communication before, they had really low attendance and it had quadrupled the number of people that tuned into normal meetings than when they had them before on Teams because they suddenly had said, we can only do this on this platform, we can't do it somewhere else. All of a sudden, the attendance rates go through the roof because you've got a platform that people feel they need to use. So I think it's continually thinking differently but not staying in your thoughts for too long in terms of I could do this and could do this and the collaborative spirit around that is I've had six other people this week who we've agreed to do dabble time so what we're going to do once a week is set up an hour where we're going to go into each of the platforms and actually dabble and play with them and actually see what works and what doesn't work and actually create deliberate diversions and challenges and say right how do you solve this problem and put people on the spot because you know yourself Charlie when we're using Zoom and, and Teams or any other platform, something will freeze or something won't work. And, you know, I, where I'm once the host or the trainer in the room, I'm also the, the trainer who's in front of the audience, but I've also got to be managing the technology while I'm holding that audience. It's, it's important to get the time to practice with those things. So I would also encourage organisations to try and build dabble time in there, not structured time to say, do it this way, do it this way, and try it this way, but giving people time to play you know, giving them time to go online and set up a collaborative network, 10 people where they can go on and they can take turns at being the host. They can take turns at using whiteboards. They can connect their phones up to it and actually think quite differently about how to do stuff and give them a chance to really try things in different ways rather than just how to use the basics. Because I, I think a lot of businesses will be investing a lot of money in actually training people now how to use some of these platforms, which is incredibly important. And I, I, please don't think I'm undervaluing that at all. But it's just that time to fail is actually going to be really important with it as well as having the space to practice and to try and to have a bit of fun with it and see what you can do with it as well. That double time is so, so important. And I think people and businesses at the moment have a choice. They can either uh, try and carry on as normal, try and, and pivot or kind of go into a state of panic or like just try and see all of the opportunities available to what's going on at the moment. You know, if you've got staff that are working from home and can't do something else um, and, you, you know, you do have uh, a little bit of extra time, get them to, like you said, dabble with different technologies, you know, enroll them on online training programs, get trainers that are able to do online training. I mean, I'm very fortunate because when I set up my training and consulting business the majority of the stuff I do is actually online so you know for me pivoting or working slightly different isn't so much of a problem because I'm already used to doing it but there are so many people that are trying to start adapting tools like Zoom uh, you know like meetings and teams and go to webinar and all sorts of things but trying to do what they did in the classroom but online or try to do the same thing without thinking differently and you know I I hope that a lot of organizations will choose to be proactive and choose to sort of spend time having a look at what they're also doing because the other thing as well is that if you've got extra time have a look at your existing operations you know what do you have at your um 
fingertips that you can leverage at the moment to make the best out of what do you have that you're not currently using that you know is a huge asset speaking to a few people last week that are just sitting on blog articles upon blog articles like white papers loads of research that they've invested time and money into doing and they're just waiting for people to find it on their website and it's like hang on a minute you there's so much you can do with this you just need to realize that you're sitting on a gold mine of information there's so many skills and crafts that that people can build through this really dark space at the moment to actually help people to come out the other side of this in a more skilled place that they've you've suddenly increased people's you know approach to using technology or their approach to doing different things in the workplace and I think it was um, the research I read from uh, Towards Maturity in partnership with CIPD a few years ago was talking about um, 85% I think if I recall of businesses wanting to use technology to do learning but only 25% of people having the ability to be able to do that that's a massive skills gap so if that skills gap exists here's the opportunity that sets to try to close some of those skills gaps out for people and but the time pressures of that have to be quite considered as well that you know where we did a training course on communication skills maybe we have to do a virtual session on how to use different platforms or giving people that dabble time within it to try different things um, and I know at the moment, so for my own agenda, I had, I had a book diary until June, which just suddenly went handbrake on, nothing. Um, now, I've had lots of design projects that I've lined up because I always try to balance my business between design and delivery. Not because of these reasons. I always think it's a good discipline to be home and be away and give yourself a good chunk. So I'm just focusing more on design stuff that I'm doing. But with that, I need to think about what I do in my business over the next few months for the stuff that I had booked in. Um, a lot of businesses are actually phoning myself or phoning people like yourself in similar situations and looking for guidance as to say, what should we do now? Rather than saying, we're going to do this, they're coming on looking for you know, advice and guidance about where to go. So I've been really, um, I've been really uh, excited by actually those conversations that have taken place as much as you know, personal circumstances and everything the last few weeks have been horrible. And like everyone else, I've been in a dark place as well with it. Um, but actually the thing that's brought me most sunshine is those customer conversations that went, can we do this, Scott, and what else can we try, and looking for your ideas and your insight and your imagination to think differently, and it's um, kind of probably the opposite end of the scale from what you're doing. I, I do online stuff, but it's not the mainstay of my business, but it has to be in the next few months, is doing something that's more online and, and remote, so I don't have a fear by using online and I use lots of different platforms to do it but it's just my business hasn't been set up in a way that that's where I've existed for most of my time but at the moment it actually does so I've seen it as an opportunity to sit down and say okay well if I'm going to use Teams or I'm going to use Zoom or I'm going to use Cube or I'm going to use whatever platform I'm going to use I need to think about how I can best possibly use those in the best possible ways then the only way that I can get to use those is to practice and to try and to play and as I said, going back to my original core point around dabbling, setting up a, a collective network of people who are in that same space is going to be, you know, the way in which you can try different things and play around in different ways. I, mean, I spent 15 minutes yesterday trying different backgrounds on Zoom with a colleague of mine, and we just we just see how random we can make the background for a laugh and all different things. And one of the guys come on to the call, uh, Lee, Lee come on to the call with a Highland cow behind him or a Highland coo. <laughs> with the horns coming out his head. Do you know, and we would have done that playfulness if we're in a face-to-face environment, had a laugh before we set off for the day and have a conversation with people at the front of the room. So I think the other things that matters incredibly is you don't just get down to business when you get when you get into using different approaches, is you have that social interaction with people because I always used this conversation with people when I was talking about the difference between face-to-face and a virtual space is that if I sit next to you and we, we work in the same office and I go to make a cup of tea, I know what you're taking your tea. I know you're always milk and no sugars. But the amount of virtual conversations that I hear people having, that they don't discover anything about that person or they don't know what they're taking their tea before they do it. And I always think it's a nice litmus test to, to kind of check how much you know about a person to say, do you know yeah. a little bit about them? And your background then becomes really important. You know, what's behind you? You know, whether you've got a, your favourite musical band in the background when you're hosting your calls from home or whether you've got something sitting on your desk that tells your story, 
I think those things as well, from an imaginative point of view, become really important that we don't lose those personal touches because we're no longer in the same office space. You can still have lots of nice social conversations around stuff. I always like doing that with the people that I speak to virtually. It's just, you know, sort of try and do the kind of like virtual, you know, sort of jab in the shoulder, you know, like, oh, you know, tell me something mm-hmm. about yourself or you can, because it's really difficult to observe environments. I mean, when I, when I do a, a call, I'm in my office space and there's quite a few things that you can see around me. Um, it, it's amazing how many people don't ask any questions about it. The plan that, you know, if you're watching this mm-hmm. video... Instead of listening, I've got a plant pot with a face on it and a cactus at the top. And that is the biggest conversation starter. So when people see see the plant pot in the background, they'll always ask me about it. Yeah. And I always try to make the effort of asking somebody something strange because I always find it's, it's good to get to know the person you're speaking to on a personal level. You don't have to go into too much detail about, you know, what you had for breakfast or like, you know, tell me all the details about your family. But, you know, just, just that, that interaction on a personal level that, shows us that we are both humans we're not robots we're not just talking business all the time and also it kind of like helps break the ice a little bit so your guard's not up and you can talk a lot more freely and get so much more out of the conversation yeah it's true it's true i mean i um i always put things in the background in those conversations that we're having to make sure there's something curious that's there for people and um what one of my um one of my good friends and um guy called rory kelly who runs a, a a toy business so he I mean, talking about flipping businesses he runs a, a like a board games club at local schools and it's gone completely gone um but paradoxically he's actually got some brilliant numeracy and and um kind of um linguistic tools and things that he uses in schools so he's got numbers games he's got letter games and stuff so he's suddenly had to um flip his his red knight toy business to actually focus more on you know, doing things in different ways. But um, he he used to work for Apple in the background of his office. He's got an Apple poster, but it's a very unusual Apple poster because if you were working for Apple on the 25th anniversary, you were the only people who owned this poster. And they gave, they gave a gift to every employee who was there on the date of the 25th anniversary. And he's always got it in the background as a conversation starter to get people to think differently about things. That when you go into the call with them, you can look at nobody's shoulder and go and, the unusual apple 25 in the middle of it what's that about and it's it gives you something again a little bit different to start those conversations off so i think again going back to the original question we had at the start of the conversation that's just about imagination and about point of concentration and um, i've got a little book in my bookshelf behind me actually it's called will there be donuts by david perrell oh, um, what's it called again Will there be donuts? Will there be donuts? Okay, I, I will link to this in the show notes. <laughs> I I would highly recommend that book in any circumstance because David was a, a theatre director and producer and he decided to make meetings more engaging. He's got quite a lot of stuff on the book about virtual meetings as well. But beyond that, there's a little part in the book he talks about POC, he talks about point of concentration. What's your point of concentration that you have in every one of those virtual sessions to get people to think differently, to think more expansively and placing those little things in the background and things in the foreground or, you know, things that you have that give people a focus, a focal point um, that I think there's a good, there's a good opportunity here to reset the way we have some of those meetings. And actually by the time that we, we hope to come out the other side of this, we can make a face to face situations even more present and even more also helps bring point. bring people back into the room as well because if you're in a face-to-face environment you always get that that tipping point in a meeting or a workshop or a training or anything like that where you know sort of people are just you know the, the sugar levels are, are getting a bit low yeah. or you know it's it's getting to that point where it's nearing the end of the day and people start to sort of shut off and it's you know a lot of really good trainers are able to sort of pinpoint something to kind of bring everybody's attention back into the room but just talk about something completely different yeah. in order to then you know, sure. re-spark that imagination, re-spark that attention and get people thinking differently. And sometimes I find that if you can talk about the most randomest thing <laughs> or something that's completely unrelated, you actually get people sort of thinking differently about things and, and talking. And I think yeah. those really creative ideas come from Absolutely. those I've, moments. Again, another author, I would urge anyone to read it at moments, say anything by Edward de Bono. Um, that his work, although it's been around for many years, is shifting your thinking. So he talks about having 
Um, I'm, I'm sure many people will be familiar with this, but I think just to reiterate it in current times, that black hat thinking is about the negatives and the downside, that if we're always thinking negatives and downside, it's good to do that if we talk about limitations of a product or our business and what we shouldn't do at the moment. So there's even a positive within that black hat, but maybe not have that black hat on all the time because it's not going to give you the healthy space to exist within. If you then take that white hat thinking around objectivity and actually thinking about the facts and what you know about your business and what are the clear things that you can identify with, Maybe take your blue hat, which is about coordinating some of that together and, and pulling the parts around it and making sure you've got a plan and you know what you're going to do next. Then if you lose your selling moments of the day in your yellow hat thinking and in sunshine and optimism and opportunity and actually think, do you know what? Your family are around you and you're, you're working at the same time. It's a nice positive space to, to be in. Or If you're not, they're only a phone call or a video screen away from you. And then your green hat is about your creativity. And actually thinking differently about it. And then your final ones, your red ones, about your feeling, your emotions, just feel like the right thing to do for you. I think even if you if you're to discipline your thoughts into those six modes of thinking at the moment, I think the bonus work's actually a, a good space to um to think about your business in. It's try to kind of almost modulate your thinking into steps and processes rather than just going, How am I going to solve this? What am I going to do? How do I fix this? How do I get to a solution? is you choose an order of thoughts and an order of style of thoughts to get yourself to the right position to find yourself the right way out of this. Um, I think that's a discipline that will be, you know, really sharpened in the months ahead of us as well, that we're really trying to find the right mode of thinking to help us to move on to the next position, the next step all the time as well. Oh, can you imagine if everybody at the moment put on their yellow hat and start thinking, you know, thinking on a more positive frame of mind, give themselves, give themselves the actual space to think and just think, what if we had to do everything virtually? And then just like really let your ideas go, uh, you know, go round rather than think, right, we have to go virtually. How do we do it? It's like, what if, you know, like, how can we think creatively about this? Be- you know, spark those ideas yeah, that you wouldn't good, normally have. A good chunk of yellow and green thinking is, is is really what I think a lot of people need to do at the moment. The creativity and the optimism about stuff. And, you know, if if, uh, if you if, if everything we're doing at the moment is, is about that black hat and it's about what's wrong and what's the problems and what we can't do, as I say, for a short period of time, that is useful to understand restrictions and barriers and things. But the black hat's not going to help us navigate away out of it. It's not going to give us the opportunities to do it differently and to find the best possible places to be there. And I mean, just some of the lovely emails I've had from people where they might always send you an email and say hello, but actually signing off the email with a take care and best wishes and thinking of you. And those little things make a hell of a difference at the moment for people. Isn't yeah, it? like just de- demonstrate human kindness it rather does. than this kind of yeah. like panic mode that's like really bringing out the worst in some people in this world. Yeah, and I, I, I don't know if you're the same, Charlie, but I've had so many emails from organisations that I've never heard of in years. Oh, some, yeah. I suddenly realised who's in the spam list now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, like but, where have they come from? Like when did I even sign up to that email address? Like like that uh, that email list, it's completely mad. Within, there's been I get one from... Um, I'm going to name the company here actually Miaka who are a furnishing company who are a small family owned business and their email was beautifully crafted beautifully crafted it felt like the person was sitting across me having the conversation the way in which it was written it was genuine, it was well intentioned it was lovely crafted the sign on it, everything on it just I actually wrote the footnote down on a piece of paper because it, I thought it was really speaking to me actually somebody's taking the time as a family business to actually say I'm caring we're listening, we're trying to help. Please don't find that you can't still buy our furnishings for you at home. But even this was a business selling furniture, which as a luxury item, I go down and do any furniture at the moment. I'd actually be more encouraged to go and buy something because of the way in which they they structured their messaging. So I, I think that's another valuable lesson for businesses is we're doing customer facing stuff and we're we're going back to customers. We really consider a language at the moment and what we're seeing and, and how we're how we're seeing it and I think there's a tricky balance here with pivoting your business, but trying to do it in a way that's authentic. It doesn't feel as if you're just promoting something that you you, you kind of went, well, I don't want to stop this, so buy this because this will solve all your problems. It's a really tricky balance for businesses to get 
right at the moment, but I just you have to keep thinking about the people who you're sending that message to who are sitting in their own homes in a current situation to be careful um, but articulate in terms of the way in which you you share your message with people as well in terms of how you do that. Yeah, I'm a huge advocate for being honest and just like really like doing it in a very authentic place you know from a good place and just being honest with the people that you're speaking to even in you know if I mean at these times aside like everybody's sort of like taking a hit doesn't matter who you are what business you have or whatever like everybody everywhere has got some um skin in the game somewhere but if you're struggling for any reason or whatever tell people you know sort of say right we're unable to do it this way so we're, we're doing it this way but don't try to cover it up um yeah and dress we're it up in some way that's in not business, you we're still trading that it's not i know you're still in business still trading because i can still see your email coming in here but it's like when i'm thinking last week when, I, when we were talking about my own business and trying to pivot it the right time to share how i'm pivoting wasn't the start of this week because i, I wasn't ready to share that and i and I actually ended up asking the conversation. I just had that honest dialogue to say, I'm still deciding what the direction of pivot actually is, but I know where I'm heading towards now. But when that time is right, I'll then message the customers and tell them what I've done. But I won't be scared of telling the customers why I haven't done the timing and what I've done to say we've all got our own circumstances and some of you be self-isolated. And, you know, I myself am isolated here as well as a diabetic. So there's... there's um personal circumstances that everyone's personally experiencing but I think using that time to to think about how you do things and then when the time feels right for you and your organization that you communicate to those customers in an honest and authentic way about where you're at and where you're moving towards and also you probably won't all get it right yeah yeah that's that's such a good point you're never going to get it right I mean for me there's I think that there's so much that the B2B world can learn from the B2C world. And there's a restaurant in Nottingham, they, you know, they recently won a, a Michelin star and they put out on social media, it's just like, you know what, we've built up this business. It's grown very, very rapidly. But now because of this time, like, you know, we're, we're really struggling, like, you know, we're really um, taking a big hit, but as such, we're now starting to do home deliveries. So you can still order the food that you wouldn't normally get because you had to wait yeah. months to get a, a, a dinner reservation. But you can now have it delivered to your home. You know, we're partnering up with Deliveroo to be able to get this to you. Uh, we're also offering vouchers for when we are open again. And they're just being very honest about the situation that they're in, but also giving people an opportunity to support them because they still want the business to survive. Um, and then also benefit in the same way in that you can get incredible food delivered to your door. Yeah, you can still get it. I mean, I live in quite a small town in the west of Scotland. And um, how businesses have flipped here is, is just beyond belief over the course of the last week we've got a, a local italian ice cream parlor that business just put the shutters down because people aren't going out to buy ice cream because it's a kind of positive happy feel good thing if you're not feeling yourself you probably don't feel like going down to the beach and buying an ice cream but they've started a home delivery service for their ice cream straight away you know another business it's a dairy farm has started delivering dairy to people's house um again I'm taking away the charges of delivery. I've just said we're not charging for it. We'll charge you for the milk, but not for the delivery of it. Um, I somebody local to here started up a, a Facebook group last week for kids and parents from an education point of view. They started on Wednesday, and by Thursday evening, and three thousand two hundred members in a small community. And then when I went on to that group, there was somebody I know who runs a mobile phone shop saying, "If anyone needs IT support, I'm happy to help." And then someone else says that we could do everything else. So all those people are pivoting at the same time and going, let's come together and try to do something with this to try and make the best out of a really horrible circumstance and to work well together. And I've had so many conversations with this people, with other people who are, you know, all self-employed, they're all consultants, so they're all got their own businesses and their own livelihoods and just having those chats and conversations and if you work for a you know big business and professional services, go and just reach out to your network. If you're on LinkedIn, go and reach out to your network and set up some conversations and some calls and just get a space to chat through things and honestly debate about what you can do and, and, and what you can't do with stuff. But I think that honesty in conversation is incredibly important at the moment. It's just to keep telling people about how, where you're at and where you're moving towards and, and then at the right time comes, tell your customers what you're doing and keep them informed of what you're doing. 
And link, LinkedIn is a real um, sort of activity hub at the moment. Like yes. there are so many more people uh, on LinkedIn hanging out there, you know, joining in on conversations, reacting to things, getting involved, doing like daily motivational videos, um, writing articles to help, offering help. It's, it's really good to see. But I think there's a lot of people that still find LinkedIn a bit daunting or not quite yeah. sure the right way of using it. Um, and, it, you know, it, it really doesn't. I thought my piece of advice is just to kind of dabble, just get involved. You know, you, you can't do job. anything I tell, wrong. I tell anyone that's listening to this and watching it is um, an article I read last week um, from a guy called Perry Timms. Uh, Perry, is, he's a brilliant speaker and, and writer. And then they works in HR. I'm, I'm sure he's probably familiar with Perry's work. But he wrote a post on, I think it was Tuesday evening or Wednesday, or Wednesday morning, um, if I remember right, the article is called Heartache. And again, you can maybe direct people to it in the show notes. But I read it and it just resonated with me as a as a as a father, as a as a husband, as a business owner, as a consultant, um, and so many levels of everything he put in it about what we should do and what we shouldn't do as businesses. And I just I thought his guidance in it was was wonderfully articulated for any business and how to get the message just right when you're trying to communicate to people about some of the things you would do. So I'd, I'd really Go and read that article by Perry because I thought it was. I think I commented to him on Twitter how much it helped me actually to clari- clarify my thinking around things and what I was going to do next and how I was going to do stuff. It was really helpful. I have to go and check out that article and then I will include that in the show notes with the book recommendations and everything <laughs> else. But yeah, like you said, language is so, so important, not just now with the times that we're moving through, but just in general, like, you know, take that time to think about who you want to communicate with and what language that they use, because if you use a different language to them, you've lost their attention and you've lost their, uh, their input. And yeah, it's just so, so important. Yeah. Also, that positive positive framing as well. I mean, there's there's a reason why everybody keeps talking about um, gratitude and having a gratitude journal. And if you write in a journal or if you do something, if you can frame it in a positive way first, then you can get so much more out of the thinking session, the workshop, the training, whatever you're going to be doing. Frame it in a positive way first and you'll get so much more out of it. Yeah. Some of the reading lists, I've seen people post this week about what they're reading and trying to find things that have got more sunshine and brightness within them and you know the world's in a pretty dark place is is in, is incredibly you know important and powerful to to do all the time and it's it's that whole balance of not sh- making sure that it's not just all about work when you're at home as well you need to exercise you know your 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 workplace but you also need to think about your own personal health in terms of how you do stuff your mental health and your physical health and your your heart and you're spending plenty of time with conversation with one of my best friends this week and she was just reminding me of the same thing all the time you know when you're in your home office going you know do a bit of stretching a bit of yoga a bit of exercise and stuff go and do some stuff I mean I, I am for the next few months um I was was pretty good at art when I was at school and I've done about I would say about six paintings since I left school and I surprised myself by how easy it was to adapt back to it when I did my last one about two years ago I've decided I'm going to set myself a goal of how many pieces of art I'm going to paint. Um, I'm also thinking about painting the home office here and actually doing a mural all the way down the wall over the period just to get those emotions on the paper and trying to do something differently with it. So if you've got a hobby or a habit or something, you're trying to get back into your routine but you've never found the time to do it, just try to plan that into your your work as well. This is you take maybe 10 minutes away and go and write something, do some poetry and um, I've seen so many people who have been through um, lived trauma and they actually, uh, one of the guys that's on my, my, my cognitized cards, um, uh, Michael, he, um, he went through some really difficult circumstances and he said that poetry really helped him, was to actually sit and write poems um, around where his dark place was and then keep writing them as he felt better. That really helped him to navigate things. Music will really help people, was having your favourite playlist playing in the background. I mean, I've got my my speaker here sat at my desk and when I'm when I'm not on calls like this, there's constant music playing in the background and stuff that I really like. So go and generate some good playlists. I mean that's a good thing to share via your um your conversations when you're having virtual meetings. Share a, you know your iTunes or whatever you use and Spotify playlists with people and share some some genuine generous things to people because you know I was Trying my best to focus on kindness is one of the key aspects, is one of the most important aspects of everything we do. But 
I think the thing that for me has been consistent in the last week with all the messages that I've had from people, the emails I've had from companies that really resonated with me, it's felt heartfelt and it's felt kind and it's felt genuine that people are actually saying, we'll be fine, you'll be okay, we'll be there for each other, if things get darker, we'll support each other and we'll do things in the right way. And I think those authentic, kind, genuine conversations have personally really helped me. Um, and I hope those same conversations I've had with others have helped them also to just make sure that everybody's continually having those chats. I've probably spoken to more people than what I normally would, if I'm really honest. Than I think that's another opportunity about, you know, now and the fact that we can meet virtually. You know, it's like you said that you're up in Scotland, you know, I'm in the Midlands at the moment. And, you know, like we can have a conversation as if we're sort of uh, sitting next to each other in a room. You know, we can talk mm. about the, the artwork that we've got in the walls. We can talk about what's going on. You know, you can make me very envious of the fact that you've got the bright sunshine outside. Oh. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get out and see the beach, unfortunately, but I can still get out oh, in the garden. Oh, no. I stopped my work last night and I had, I had a piece of work I was doing for a client. And I spoke to them and they said, look, the timeline on it's not as time critical because obviously we're not going to be back in business for the foreseeable. She goes, so just you know, keep working at the momentum that you're working at. I said, great. I thought, so the, the agenda I had, my diary for next week is scrapped. So I potentially got about another three days that I didn't have originally because I was supposed to be out delivering workshops. Now, again, I know as a consultant, my situation is my situation. That's my flexibility. But I stopped last night and I thought, I've had two um, beds in my garden that I wanted to plant for months. And the boxes have sat there and I've done nothing with them. And I've sat and they're actually starting to get, get rusty because I've sat there for too long. So I stopped and I went out. And I just started to plant some onions and some potatoes in my garden. No, I'm not, I'm not kind of thinking that I need to have those potatoes and onions because I mean, I left in the shop, so that wasn't my intention and reason for doing it. But just that mental space to go outside for a moment, breathe some air and um, take a walk around the block or go and do something that doesn't distract you from just sitting looking at constant emails and stuff that's come in that's titled... COVID or corona. Yeah, I, I always recommend people like turn off the news, turn off your emails. Don't just because you're working from oh, home doesn't no. mean that you need to be glued to your emails. It doesn't mean you need to be glued to social media either. And you do need those positive influences in your life. Yeah, Even totally. if it means like going outside, going for a walk, whilst we still can. I mean, my parents are in uh, Sardinia and they, they can't even go for a walk on the beach at the moment. You know, it's like they're sort of stuck, stuck in. I mean, even in TV, I've tended to watch things that have actually allowed me to be distracted and get absorbed in something that's not overtaxing and not serial drama, you know. I've got, like, a real addiction at the moment for American Pickers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the antique shows and stuff that I would generally just kind of watch for 10 minutes then change the channel that I'm kind of going, oh, wow, this is great. I've just got it in the background, you know, when I'm doing stuff, but I can take five minutes when five emails come in and my head's got a bit pickled to turn around and go, I'm just going to shift on to something else. And I, I do think there's a bit of a, a, a flippancy that always has existed around home working, that you're at home, you're feeding the dog and you're not doing the work or you're watching American Pickers. But for me, that's just that, that zone out time for five minutes to do something else, to light his own back in for an hour, two hours to give you the consistency. Because yeah. if you were in an office, you would have people asking you conversations or people making telephone calls to you or, or all those things. And although they're still happening for people, you don't have the physical distractions around you. So actually that American Pickers is a 10 minute conversation I might have had with Julia if I was in the fifth, fifth floor in Glasgow. It's just something else at the side, but it, it keeps me in that normality and keeps me just from sticking to the, the email, the typing, the telephone calls all the time. It's actually quite nice to break up the routine a wee bit and actually give yourself a bit more flexible headspace to, to manage through whatever way you want to do. And, and that's probably individual for different people as well and how you work because at the moment when I'm sitting doing work on my screen and I'm sitting doing work on my laptop and things, I'm trying to avoid news where possible except for checking in once a day to see what's happening. But I've still got banners from newspapers flying across my screen and I've still got emails coming in with the title of them of the stuff that I'm not really want to spend that much time reading it. So it's quite nice to actually just close the lid for a moment and go, we spend 10 minutes doing something else so I'm going to get some air for a bit. Um, I think everybody has this habit of leaving their emails open in the background and I always say like just close it down only look at your emails twice a day um, and 
just just try and keep away from those those distractions like stay off facebook because facebook is just so full of negativity um you know it's just like there's one positive post in every five uh you know i'm part of quite a few different business uh groups on facebook and i really hate it you know that's what i think that's why i spend more time on linkedin because it's less clouded by by the quarter on linkedin at the moment and i mean i may still have one facebook group in my local area it was really good but the reason it was really good it was it was about help and about support and about collaborating and about sharing things it kind of felt a bit more like the linkedin space as to things and even twitter it's so hard at the moment because there's so many i mean there's somebody i don't know if you've seen arnold schwarzenegger's posts on twitter but they're worth watching alone at the moment because he's in isolation with his age and stuff and they're just hysterical even though he's doing isolation stuff it's brilliant <laughs> He's got a video where he's in his house with his two donkeys. At the table. He's talking, and it, it's just wonderful. Um, I saw Matt Lucas as well, um, who's another person who's in isolation, just tell a lovely human story um, to camera. Uh, I, I think if you're on Twitter, it's following or, or looking at the right people at the moment rather than just scrolling the news and, and having everything is going to be quite important. You're quite careful about what you check and what you don't check because there's... I think it's a really important time to connect with others as well. Like, you know, if you're in a massive organisation, like my brother works for Ford and, you know, they're all working for home at the moment, working from home at the moment. So it's like, you know, if you're in a big organisation working from home, take that time to connect with colleagues that you wouldn't necessarily speak to, you know, jump on a virtual call with them, use tools like Zoom if you can or whatever you've got at your fingertips, but then also take it outside of the organisation as well. Like, you know, use it to connect with people that you wouldn't normally speak to. And that's part of why I love doing this podcast because I feel like, you know, these podcast episodes, I can connect with other people. So it's great. I mean, the simple things you can do with your your your, your technology you've got. I mean, if, if you find that your mood is being badly affected by everything you're reading at the moment, delete all your social media off your phone and just view it on your laptop. Well, I just took a two-week break. So, I mean, this this was before all of this madness happened because uh, I went to Sardinia for two weeks. Uh, then I came back and then I went on like a weekend retreat to try and sort of like just refocus my business and everything else because as you know I have a seven month old so things have been like in a state of chaos for quite a while now (laughs) so just having that time away and when I was away for two weeks I just deleted all social media apps I didn't look at the news I didn't go on any social media and it was amazing and it was just it was great to you know read a book that wasn't a business book and it wasn't anything negative and just yeah reconnect with me and what I want to do and you have such great ideas when you do that as well. I know. As I, I mean, I made mean the point about taking it off your phone. You don't carry your laptop around everywhere with you in your home computer. So the times that people tend to keep checking on social media is when they're pondering and they just go through and they start clicking things and they're away before they know it. They're doing a 20 minute rabbit hole of reading news that's really hard to digest at the moment as well. So it's, I, I think it's, it's when we were chatting at the start of the, the call challenge just before we come on about trying to find the right context for everything we talk about that obviously when you listen to a podcast you listen to it at the time when you listen to it so you might listen to this when it comes out you know in the coming week but you might listen to it in six months when the context is all very different so whenever we do get back to the world that we're in even though it's going to be a very different world when we get there because what we had before is, is gone everything changes every day and that world we had you know last week no longer exists I think it's important to keep thinking of those same principles. Just keep talking to people, keep sharing, keep being kind and generous to people. You know, keep um, keep trying to think differently about your organisation. It's even more critical in times of crisis that you do that. But I think we should be doing that on a more regular basis, regardless of whether we're in crisis or not. To keep Absolutely. thinking about how we can have our businesses to, to exist in, in very different ways. And we could talk about this for ages. I think we could kind of keep talking about uh, different different books, different mindsets, different ways of doing things. And uh, you know, I think we've been talking for a while now, so it's probably a good idea to bring this episode to a close. Um, but I think some key themes that have come out of this episode is you know being about giving yourself that thinking time think differently, you know, ask yourself those questions, those what ifs, those imagine what, and, um, you know, put a, put a positive spin on everything that you do, like go into that good place and give yourself the time, uh, be creative and try and help as many people as possible, be kind and, and support each other because we're not going to get through this alone. We have to work together. Don't forget to dabble. 
and don't forget to dabble. I love it. <laughs> Definitely the theme. Don't forget to dabble. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for being, uh, yeah, you know, well, for joining me on this podcast. I feel like I'm mumbling quite a lot today. <laughs> don't know why I'm not normally like this. Um, and if, any parting words of wisdom apart from don't forget to dabble? Don't forget to dabble. Do you know what? I, I think the best thing to sign off with, given the current context, everything that we're in, was, was the tail off of that email I got from the furnishing company. Because I didn't expect to get inspiration from what I was looking for from my furnishing emails, but it finished off with be kind, stay safe, look after yourself and look after each other. And I just think that's the best message I could give in the current context. And A lovely way to finish this episode. So thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you for joining me. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you, Charlie. Thanks, Cheers. everyone. Bye. Bye.